How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. A couple of months ago, I made an MCU complete timeline video, chronicling where the movies and TV shows all take place. Well, with the recent release of Spider-Man No Way Home, that video is completely outdated. So, we're going to be redoing it, and with much better audio quality I might add. Real quick, spoilers for all things MCU, and especially No Way Home. I won't get into gigantic main plot detail spoilers, but just enough where you won't be going into each of the movies completely blind. You've been warned. I'll let you know once we get into the No Way Home spoilers though, so just look out for that. And without further ado, let's get into this timeline. We begin with the earliest film in the timeline, which is Captain America The First Avenger. Not the first Marvel film released, but the first chronologically. This film begins in 1942 and lasts all the way to 1945 when Steve freezes in the ice. There are a few scenes in 2011, being the beginning and the end, but you can just ignore those and watch those right before the Avengers. We'll get into that one later. Technically here too you can watch a Captain Carter episode of What If since it's what happens in another universe, but I don't recommend that and I'll include the entirety of What If much later in this list so you can check it out there. This time around, I decided to add the Captain Carter TV show, as after seeing the human Jarvis in Endgame, who's played by the exact same actor who played him in this show, I'd say that's pretty solid proof that this show happened in the main timeline. While elements of the show do bleed into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I know this may suck to hear, but I'm not adding that show to this timeline. Since there have been too many events that contradict its inclusion to this series, and for this show, there's really not any, so you can definitely add it to the viewing order. Next we have a Marvel one-shot, that being Agent Carter. This short takes place in 1946, one year after Cap went down to the ice. This one is an odd short as technically it's a tie-in to the Agent Carter TV show, which again is still canon. If you want to check this one out, it's in the extras of the Iron Man 3 on Blu-ray, or it's on Disney+. We move forward quite a few decades into 1995 with Captain Marvel. There's so much 90s pop culture in this film that it's impossible to not pick up on the year. And while this film was released in Phase 3, for timeline's sake, it would play out right here. The post credit scene takes place in 2018, so make sure not to watch that until after Infinity War, which again, we'll get back to later. Finally, we get to the very first MCU film released, that being Iron Man. This film has been kind of messy in continuity, and there have been many sources trying to place it in 2010 due to something called Fury's Big Week, but I'm taking Vision's statement in Civil War to heart here, where he solidly places this film in 2008. The next Iron Man film is actually quite a few years after the first, and I'll take this six months later title card to be six months after Ivan Vanko saw Tony announce himself as Iron Man. Maybe he was watching like a rerun or something, I have no idea. The reason this is in 2011 is because of Fury's Big Week, which is referenced in Avengers, where multiple films play out concurrently with one another. Fury's Big Week has actually been sort of been proven canon with the third episode of What If, which solidly places this movie first before the next two, since most of its events happen first. Not much to talk about this next one shot, which is a funny thing happened out of way to Thor's hammer. Just that, it's what Coulson did going in between Iron Man 2 and Thor. You can watch it on the Captain America Blu-ray, but this one isn't on Disney Plus for some reason. The next film, Thor, starts us all the way back in 965 AD, and a flashback of Thor and Loki as kids. But most of the film takes place in 2011, which we can tell since Coulson shows up during the events of Iron Man 2, and Fury and Darcy have lines in Avengers and Thor 2, that places this film in 2011. This one actually got moved ahead in the timeline before Hulk, since in the What If Episode 3, the majority of the events of Thor would happen alongside Iron Man 2, and plus if you watch these two movies back to back, it fits a lot nicer. The Incredible Hulk mostly seems non-canon to many, since obviously Edward Norton isn't Bruce Banner anymore, but this Hulk is seen in Avengers, and Thunderbolt Ross has become a big character again starting in Civil War, so this movie definitely happened. It's been moved down a slot to After Thor, since once again, based on What If Episode 3, the majority of events of The Incredible Hulk would be after Thor, and plus, Tony Stark appears after the events of Iron Man 2 to talk to Ross about the Avengers initiative, meaning enough time has to have happened after Iron Man 2 for him to be here, so it would be the latest film in the Fury's Big Week trilogy. The consultant is sometime between Hulk and the Avengers, as Coulson and Sitwell talk about whether or not Abomination should become an Avenger. I'm assuming the Abomination is taken sometime after this to go and be in the fighting arenas with Wong and Shang-Chi, but I'm getting way ahead of myself here. This is on the Thor Blu-ray disc, and again, not on Disney+. Plus. Finally, we move on to the Avengers, where all of the heroes we've seen up until this point 
well, besides Captain Marvel, come together to fight off Loki. This film takes place in 2012, its release year, as confirmed by Endgame, which outright tells us. Item 47 is a one-shot that was basically a precursor to the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show, but since that show is deemed non-canon now, you can basically skip this one. I only added it since it's another one-shot, and it's on the Avengers Blu-ray disc, and still not on Disney+. Plus. The beginning of Phase 2 is Iron Man 3, which is kind of an odd one recently, as Disney Plus listed as after being Thor The Dark World, which I don't think makes any sense, as this has to be Christmas time of 2012, since this film deals with Tony's PTSD from the Avengers, and narratively fits pretty well as him dealing with the aftermath from that incident. Gonna have to deviate from the Disney Plus order on this one, and put it after the Avengers. All Hail the King is easily the best one-shot, as this one deals with the aftermath of Iron Man 3, and shows that Trevor Slattery is going to meet up with the real Mandarin. I was correct earlier about this one circling back in Shang-Chi, so I'll just pat myself on the back for that one. This one also has now been added to Disney+, Plus, so you can check it out there. The beginning of Thor The Dark World definitely takes place after Avengers, with Loki being taken to Asgard as a prisoner, and the flashback takes place all the way back in 2987 BC. Besides those, the whole of this movie takes place sometime in 2013, as there are a bunch of calendars around to show that, and in Endgame, it confirmed that this film is in 2013. I still personally believe Iron Man 3 is in Christmas of 2012, so that's why this comes after. The next film is Captain America The Winter Soldier, which takes place two years after The Avengers, which would be in the year 2014, its release year. In this film, we get the return of Bucky, and the introduction to Falcon, and you'll become buddy-buddy much later on. We move away from the core Avengers team, and move into space. This film begins with a flashback in 1988, where Peter Quill is kidnapped from Earth, and we then move on to him during adulthood in 2014. This one would be really hard to place, as technically it could take place anywhere at least until 2018, but luckily, Endgame once again confirmed that this one takes place in 2014. Next up, we have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, which wasn't released until 2017, but it's actually a direct sequel to the first film, mainly due to Groot's age in this movie, as it wouldn't make sense for him to be Baby Groot in 2017, then instantly a teenager in 2018, so having him still be a baby in 2014 makes a lot of sense. Plus, why would Ego wait that long and go after Quill? With that, I'm going to be placing this film at least a few months after the first one. A couple of post credit scenes with Teen Groot would take place at least before Infinity War, though. Now, before we get into this next entry, this one contains spoilers for Spider-Man No Way Home, so I'm warning you now to maybe click away. Next, we finally head into the world of the Netflix Marvel heroes, who have finally, truly, been confirmed to actually be in the MCU. While Daredevil may be new to audiences today, he actually got to start all the way back in 2015, with the first season of Daredevil. This is also where we get our first appearance of Wilson Fisk, aka The Kingpin. With Daredevil in the MCU now, we also need to bring the other Netflix series to the universe as well, which in this case is Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones' first season takes place in 2015, which is shortly after the events of Daredevil Season 1. Moving back to the films, we have Age of Ultron, which takes place sometime around 2015. There aren't really any dates to go off of, but since this film came out in 2015, I'll put it here. We get the introduction to Wanda, Pietro, and Vision in this movie. And two out of three of these guys will become important figures in MCU history. We move on to Ant-Man next, which has to have taken place a little bit after Age of Ultron, since Ant-Man visits the new Avengers base, which they got in Ultron 2015. The intro takes place in 1989, a little after Wasp's death, but it mostly takes place in the summer of 2015. Back to TV territory, we head into Season 2 of Daredevil, which either takes place in late 2015 or early 2016. I'm gonna say late 2015, as it doesn't seem as if that much time has passed since Season 1. We do get the introduction to Punisher and Elektra in the series as well, and we'll be seeing some more to Punisher later on. The first season of Luke Cage takes place a while after the events of Jessica Jones Season 1, and we know that has to be after Season 2 of Daredevil, as we saw a screen on TV referencing a prison-related event in Season 2, so it would be around the same time as the second half of Daredevil, but for the most part, after it. What's odd about this one is the fact that Mahershala Ali is Cottonmouth in this series, but he's been recently announced as Blade coming into the films, which is weird, but maybe Cottonmouth was a scroll all along and saw Blade and took his face or something. That's a lie, I don't know why they have the same face. We finally get into the worst MCU show, in my opinion at least, where we see Danny Rand return to New York after 15 years, which would mean this show takes place in 2016. There's nothing saying where it relates in terms of events of Luke Cage, but to get to the Defenders, I'm gonna say it's a few months after Luke Cage. 
The last entry of Phase 2 and the culmination of all the Netflix series we met so far meet up for their own version of the Avengers in The Defenders. While this season released in 2017, it takes place a month after Iron Fist, meaning it lands right here in the timeline to cap off the second phase of the MCU. We start off Phase 3 with Captain America Civil War. This film is pretty much a nexus for introducing a lot of films, so the place on this one is very important. Taking Vision's statement again, we can narrow this film down to 2016 and most likely in the summertime. We now move on to Black Widow, which takes place directly after Civil War. Sure, it only came out this year as a part of Phase 4, but this film deals with the aftermath of Civil War and what Black Widow is doing afterwards. We can definitely tell since most of the Avengers are still in prison at this time, and Natasha is going to go and break them out at the end of the movie, which is what we see in the end of Civil War. So this film has to be directly after that. The intro takes place in 1995, which should be around the time of Captain Marvel though. Ignore the post credit scene at all costs and just watch that after Endgame. The next film, Black Panther, takes place here, even though it was released years after. A line early on in this film says it takes place a week after Civil War, so this one definitely overlaps with the events of Black Widow, but takes place mostly after that one is wrapped up. Then we get into a film that is extremely hard to place due to the weirdest dates ever. I remember in the theater I was extremely confused by the 8 years later title card, as I would put this in 2020, but that's literally impossible. Luckily, the directors have confirmed that is a mistake. But seriously, how the hell do you not notice that gigantic mistake in the beginning of the movie? Anyways, the intro overlaps during Civil War with Peter's point of view on what is happening, and then takes place a couple months later in the fall, as that is typically when homecomings take place. And I would know since I'm a high schooler. Meaning this film actually is a few months after Civil War in 2016, not 2020. It gets even more confusing again, as in What If Episode 5, which takes place in 2018, Peter says that a year ago, Stark asked him to join the Avengers, which would make this in 2017. Once again, that doesn't make any sense, so Marvel just really doesn't know how to place this movie. Putting it in 2016 also keeps his age consistent as well with Far From Home and No Way Home, so we'll solidly keep it in the fall of 2016 to hope Marvel can stop messing with the chronology of this movie. Now we head into our first TV series of Phase 3 with The Punisher, which takes place a year after Daredevil Season 2, placing this in 2016. Since it seems to be around fall times, it would be a little while after Spider-Man Homecoming. Now we finally get to Doctor Strange. This one takes place a lot later than you'd think, since Strange had to train for many months with the Ancient One to actually be able to use his powers. So the intro takes place before Civil War, and once Strange has completed his training, the rest of the movie takes place after that. So, for simplicity, I'm just going to be putting this here, months after Civil War. It may be overlapping with Homecoming, but mostly after that. The second season of Jessica Jones takes place in early 2017, which is a few months after the events of The Defenders, and it's been 17 years since 2000, which is when she got her powers, so I'll place this whole season in early 2017. The next season we have is Luke Cage's Season 2, which also takes place a few months after The Defenders, but since this came out after Jessica Jones' Season 2 and features Iron Fist before his second season, I think it's safe to place it here. We flash a little while after Luke Cage Season 2 for Iron Fist's second season, which doesn't take place very long after his appearance in Luke Cage, so this must come immediately after that season. We then move into Thor Ragnarok, which has to take place a few years after Ultron, as Thor tells Banner that Ultron was two years ago, meaning this has to have taken place sometime in 2017. The end credit scene would be just a little bit right before Infinity War though. Matt has been conked out for months after the Defenders in the events of Daredevil Season 3, and is slowly beginning to recover himself. And this takes place towards the end of 2017, as we head into Daredevil's last on-screen appearance for quite a long while, since the show got cancelled shortly after this season. But it's not the last time we see him forever, thankfully. One year after the events of Season 1, we have The Punisher Season 2, which released in early 2019, but based on very important events that happened in 2018, the show can't possibly take place in this year, and since it's one year after Season 1, that puts this season in late 2017. Our final Netflix show on this list is Jessica Jones Season 3, which takes place some months after Season 2, and has to be long enough after Season 2 of Luke Cage for his appearance in this season to make any sense. This has to take place in early 2018, as it wouldn't make any sense for it to take place in its release year of 2019. Another film moved ahead of where it's supposed to be is Ant-Man and the Wasp, which takes place a little bit before Infinity War, and three years after Civil War, since Scott's house arrest is now over after three years. I don't personally know how long before Infinity War it is, but at least a couple weeks before it. Again, avoid the post credit scene at all costs, and watch that after Infinity War. Finally, the culmination of this whole series so far, Infinity War. 
This film takes place in 2018, as confirmed by Endgame, where Thanos gathers all of the Infinity Stones and eliminates half of all life in the universe. This is the last film to basically take place around real world time too, as in the next one we move into the future. The finale to the Infinity Saga of the MCU, Endgame, takes place 5 years after Infinity War. The beginning is only a couple of weeks after, but the rest is 5 years later in 2023. This film dealt with time travel a lot, and they went back to many old points in time. But again, time travel runs on multiverse theory here, so no changes these guys made actually did anything to their original timeline. Even though old Cap is around now, I really hope we see a shorter movie with him going back to Return of the Stones though, as that would be awesome. Now we move on to Phase 4 with Loki, which is where the whole timeline begins to get really confusing, mainly since it deals with time travel and multiverses and all that. I'm putting it after Endgame as it takes place literally directly after Endgame, though everything with the multiverse opening up may relate back to the events of Multiverse of Madness, but we can save that for when the movie and for Season 2 of the show come out. This one is where things start going crazy. What if? Since the finale of Loki broke open the possibility of a multiverse, I'm gonna say that this is when a lot of the multiverse universes begin to exist. This show, and maybe even a lot of other shows that are deemed non-canon now, like Age of the Shield, Runaways, Inhumans, Cloak and Dagger, can now all exist in this multiverse period. So if you want to watch all those shows here, you can. You don't really need to watch all of them since they're all cancelled and don't really add anything to the Marvel viewing experience except maybe Age of the Shield, but this is where you can watch them. You definitely need to watch What If though, as it's going to be important for Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness, so watch it here after the multiverse is broken in Loki. Moving back into the non-multiverse stuff for now, in the main prime Marvel reality, we have WandaVision, which shows us the aftermath of the endgame snap where Monica Rambeau returns, and then 3-4 to four weeks later, the show begins, as that's when Monica returns to S.W.O.R.D. and Wanda created the Westview Anomaly. The Hex is something that was kind of time dilated, where days could pass in only a few minutes in the real world, but for the most part, this takes place 3-4 to four weeks after Endgame in 2023. The Falcon and Winter Soldier is next on the timeline, It takes place around 6 months after Endgame, meaning this show is most likely sometime in 2024. This show is odd now due to Valentina also appearing in Black Widow, so that post credit scene could take place before she met John Walker, or after, I'm not very sure. But besides that, the majority of this show is 6 months after Endgame. The first movie of Phase 4, Eternals, is also a confusing one, since it jumps time periods very frequently, as there are a lot of flashbacks millions of years in the past, but the main core of this movie is around 2024, and has been confirmed to take place concurrently with Falcon and Winter Soldier. It's left open for a sequel that may be a direct sequel to this one, but we'll just have to wait and see if we even get a sequel to this very odd MCU movie. Finally, hearing about the Ten Rings again after almost 10 years, we head into the events of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, which is very odd about its timeline placement as well. It's 100% post-Endgame, and has to be a pretty long while after it, since society seems well adjusted to half the population being back by now, and since Captain Marvel has her hair grown all out again, it has to be at least 2024. I want to say that since it would make more sense for it to be after Eternals and Falcon, due to them having good jobs and society being all back to normal, which looked a lot more hectic back in Eternals and Falcon, so yeah, Shang-Chi taking place around here would be pretty good. Next, we have a very odd one now, and a very controversial pick, as technically right now it isn't MCU at this point in time, but screw it, Venom is next in the timeline. This is the first real film that takes place in another universe, and I'm only including it here since it makes sense for No Way Home. In this reality, none of the other Marvel heroes or villains exist, as evident by Eddie not believing in aliens at first, and though this movie released in 2018, so should be put there, but it makes more sense for it to be here, since it's heavily related to the next Spider-Man movies coming up. Again, technically it's another dimension, but since it joins the Prime MCU eventually, we need to put it here. Next is Spider-Man Far From Home. The definitive version of this movie is the extended cut, which includes the Peter's Day Out one-shot, and the main film is set months after Endgame in the summer of 2024, meaning it's only a couple of months after the events of Falcon, Eternals, Shang-Chi, and all the movies and shows that came after it. Makes sense since most people seem to have gotten over the sudden return of half the population, which was kinda worked out in Falcon, so that's why everybody is acting normal enough at this time, which is similar to how people act in Shang-Chi, though this is later than that film, as confirmed by Kevin Feige. 
We move back into the Venomverse to prove why we should have watched Venom at least before this point in time. Again, the whole movie is set in another reality, but it merges with the main reality in the post credit scene, where Eddie and Venom are sent to the main MCU, and see Peter getting outed as Spider-Man in a very similar newscasting as shown at the end of Far From Home, meaning that Eddie and Venom have to have arrived here at least at that time of that broadcast was being shown, which is during the events of Far From Home, now making Venom canon to the main MCU. Pretty huge, right? And this next one is a little hard to explain. So, Loki ended with the multiverse becoming a thing, and in the next MCU Spider-Man, the multiverse is broken, with visitors from other realities making their way to the main one. So, again, major spoilers for No Way Home, the next films to take place are the original Tobey Maguire Spider-Man trilogy. I know, these films came out in 2002, 2004, and 2007, respectively, but it wouldn't make sense to watch them after Captain Marvel, since you won't see Toby for quite a long while. And you could technically watch this after What If, since this is a movie in a different universe that was created because of Loki, but for it to make the most sense, you should watch it right before No Way Home, that way you understand who appears in that movie right before you watch it. With Tobey Maguire's movies, we also need to place in Andrew Garfield's The Amazing Spider-Man movies which take place in another universe where a different Peter Parker had a different Spider-Man experience. Again, these films came in 2012 and 2014, meaning before the first Avengers and after Winter Soldier, but that won't make any sense either, so please just watch it here right now before you watch No Way Home. Now we finally get into No Way Home, which reintroduces the Spider-Man from the other realities in this movie, and showing off our first look at the Netflix heroes showing up on the big screen for the first time. While we don't really get a definitive date on when this takes place, it's obviously after Far From Home, and at the end, it's definitely after it in the winter time, which is right before Hawkeye. This is kind of a weird one to end on, I know, but Hawkeye takes place a year after Endgame, meaning it would be in Christmas time of 2024. We also know it has to be after No Way Home, since in that film it's six months after Endgame at least, and we can see Rogers the Musical just starting its Broadway show, which is continuing on in Christmas. Plus, Yelena mentions the new and improved Statue of Liberty, which appeared in No Way Home. So, Hawkeye is going to take place a little after No Way Home in Christmas time, and is the final entry in the timeline for now. With that, we finally caught up to the new definitive 2021 MCU viewing order slash timeline. This one took a bit of time and research to get right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to see more MCU stuff from me, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. That way you can see more and then check back in at the end of 2022 once I make the new updated timeline after everything Marvel that's come out next year. Thank you all so much for watching this video and until we meet again. See you later!